Okay, so this should be the concluding video on Act 1, Scene 2. Uh, we introduced Caliban. Shakespeare introduced Caliban. We come to a little bit of an understanding of his history and his grudge against Prospero. And, and in the, that relationship, we see the way that Prospero is a little bit good, a little bit bad in terms of the way he exploits and uses others, um, even to some extent his daughter, who he will use sort of as a pawn in his game. And it is very much like a game of chess, we will see later on, where the island is the chessboard and Prospero is controlling all of the characters on the island to achieve this outcome at the end of the play. Okay, now we meet Ariel, the spirit, that Prospero has also conscripted and they have this sort of mutual relationship where Prospero helped her escape. She was imprisoned inside of a tree and Prospero helped her out in exchange for her services, which is a limited contract. And Ariel does mention, um, okay, I, I did this storm for you. Now, when am I going to get my freedom? And Prospero says, not yet, you know, don't make me put you back in a tree. I'll put you in, in an oak tree this time instead of a pine tree. The oak being a little stronger, harder wood, maybe harder to get out of for spirits in this weird spirit world um, than a pine tree. Uh, so uh, let's look a little more into um, Ariel and then the introduction of this character, Ferdinand and the, the budding love story between Prince Ferdinand and, um, I guess, well, she might be a duchess. Uh, I'm thinking of Miranda. Well, at, at any rate, she's the princess of the island. So um, they meet each other and are smitten, and we'll look at that in just a second. So Caliban grumbles away, and then re-enter Ariel, invisible, so nobody can see her, but the audience can. She's playing and singing. I imagine some kind of dancing. There's probably music going on, and this music would have been a very special, special effect in the theater back in the day, and it would have had sort of hypnotic, mesmerizing effect on the audience, and it would have been quite special. Um, so I don't know what the tune was, maybe some Shakespeare scholars do, but here is the song that she sings, and there's this bow wow, the watchdogs bark, um, hark hark I hear the strain of strutting Chanticleer, we know who that is from Chaucer. I don't, actually, maybe we didn't read that tale, but Chanticleer is a, a rooster, uh, and I forget the nun's priest's tale in Chaucer, um, and the rooster is famous for a cock a little do Ferdinand hears the music, says it sounds like it's coming from the air, some god over the island sitting on a bank weeping again. The king, my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. And Ariel starts singing it again. So we see the effect that the music and the magic has on Ferdinand. In the storm, he lost his father. There was all this raging waves and... Uh, chaos, and, and Ferdinand notices that it's sort of calmed down by this music, which he follows, and it leads him to this spot on the beach. Um, and the music says, Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Ariel is saying that Ferdinand's father, Alonzo, um, 
she's speaking in metaphors. Ferdinand might interpret this that he has gone underneath the water, drowned, he's become something else. But what we see here in this music and the, the lyrics here is an image of transformation. He has gone under the water, some, the sea has done something to him, and we will find out that he in fact is going to undergo some kind of transformative experience on the island. So the old Alonzo, the father of Ferdinand, is basically dying or dead and is re-emerging in the island and in the plot of the play. So Ariel has a little bit of a code to all of the songs that she sings. And then in comes Prospero and Miranda. And Miranda's never seen anyone before, and she's smitten straight away. What is it, a spirit? Lord, how it looks about me. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form. But tis a spirit? And Prospero kind of gruffly says, No wench, it eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have such. Uh, so Prospero says, No, it's a human being. He's alive. He has senses. And so we can see that Miranda is, is quite taken aback. Um, Miranda even goes so far as to call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. And this includes her father, and also maybe Caliban, who is sort of like a half-monster character. So um, anyway, Miranda sees Ferdinand as, uh, you know, quite a, um, I don't know, a handsome guy, charming. She's charmed by him. And he's also feeling the same way. He says, most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give. So he, he's looking at Miranda as if she was a goddess. She says, no, I'm not a wonder, sir, but certainly a maid, as in, I'm a mortal, but I'm still a good mortal, a maid. Um, but she's no special wonder. Um, all right. Uh, here we have Prospero probably getting a little stern here. And he lies and says, I saw your father um, with my own eyes. The king... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Ferdinand says, I've seen my my father in the shipwreck, and um, I'm from Naples. I think my father's probably dead. Miranda's like, oh, mo oh no, a lack for mercy. Ferdinand says yes, and even other people died too, the Duke of Milan. And then Prospero says, actually, aside, the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee. If now twere fit to, to it, at the sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee for this. At first sight they have changed eyes. He's indicating he's noticed that they have eyes for each other. Um, there's a sparkle, a shine. It's like this love at true first, true love at first sight phenomenon. And he's going to bring in Ariel, and he's going to uh, start manipulating the courtship of Miranda and Ferdinand. Yes, he says aside again, and a few a few lines later, they are both in each in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make less too light winning make the prize light. Saying he's gotta make it more difficult for them to fall in love. You can't just fall in love straight away and it work out because if you earn the love, if you have to go through some, some sort of trial and tribulation in order to get the love, then it's going to be that much sweeter for the winning. So I guess he has some good intentions in mind, but he's still being manipulative. Um, here he accuses Ferdinand. One, more, one word more, I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name, thou owest not and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me. 
the Lord on it. He's saying you come from this conspiracy in which, you know, your father has um, plotted or been complicit in this plot to uh, take the dukedom from me. And here you are, a spy on the island. Um, and so Prospero says, he's a traitor, come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. So what Prospero is going to do is to make him like the sort of pseudo prisoner on the island and have him do some work. Um, sort of, there's a justified punishment there, I suppose, but Prospero's kind of playing a game with him. Uh, and it also gives Ferdinand and Miranda a chance to be a little bit more separate from one another so that they can fall in love a little more slowly um, and add a little bit more intrigue into their love story. So Ferdinand here begins to show some of his goodness and nobility in accepting the, the punishment that Prospero gives, gives him. And he says, my spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All comers else of the earth, let liberty make us of space enough have I in such a prison. He is saying... I've lost my father, my friends, gone through the trauma of this shipwreck, but I've got this one little piece of hope, and that is through the prison door, I might get a glimpse of this wonderful Miranda. Okay, he thinks everybody's dead in the storm, that he's the sole survivor. Prospero has made him think this. Um, but the big hope that he holds in his heart is maybe something of seeing Miranda um, on the island with her that sort of balances out. And that might remind you of two particular lovers in Chaucer, Arcite and Palamon in their prison, and the hope that they get in viewing Emily uh, from there uh, behind the bars of their prison tower. And so there we have it set up, um, the, the scene the whole the game the chessboard is sort of set up if you will and I'll refer back to this uh, character list here um, these are some of the characters that we've met already but we'll meet some more of them later on Alonzo the king of Naples he wasn't the usurper of, of Prospero's dukedom but he uh, he profited from Antonio, who took over his brother's dukedom. Okay, now Antonio's the real bad guy. Alonso's bad because he was sort of going along with it. His son Ferdinand um, is removed from Alonso and placed on the beach next to Prospero and Caliban and Ariel and Miranda. Alonso and his crew, which includes this guy Gonzalo, not on the chart here, but Gonzalo and then there's some other servants there on another side of the island and we have Antonio and some others on another side of the island and we have some servants on another section of the island and so Prospero knows what all of these little groups are doing he's gonna bring them together and sort of march them into place in order for them to have this experience later on in the play and so in a way one cool thing to, to look at is the island sort of as a chessboard and Prospero as the prime mover of all the pieces. Another theme that's emerging here is this idea of the slave and the master. And again, this is in the 1600s. England had some colonies over in what became the United States in the early Americas. Um, there were islands, there, there was even Jamestown was, was established. Um, and rumors of the native inhabitants in these colonies um, came up. And so the idea behind Caliban is definitely modeled on the idea of encountering some sort of native um, 
dweller 